No! What? He just shot in the head with a tank round? So one of them is actually a bear, whoa, whoa. I guess. Wait, what the? So what's up with the spaceship? You're about to see what's up with the spaceship. This video is sponsored by Raycon. Stick around to find out how you can get 15% off a pair of your own. Hey guys, welcome to Visual Effects Artist React. This is the show where we take a look at your favorite movie clips and we tell you why they're good. And sometimes we tell you they're bad. Fun fact, uh, this is kind of like how they shot Lord of the Rings. This is how they made <laughs> Frodo and Bilbo Baggins look so tiny compared to the big old Gandalf. This is, this is special behind the scenes footage of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Guess what, we got some great clips, we got some janky clips, and we're gonna look at them today. Let's just take a look at a Russian film called T-34. Isn't that a calculator? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, their muzzle flashes from these tanks are so good. Yeah, these are world-class, like, slow-mo particle sims. Dude, look at that slow-mo bullet. What kind of bullet was that? It's a tank bullet. It's a tank bullet. Oh, right in the <gasps> face? No! What? Did you just shot in the head with a tank round? What? In the freaking head, someone wrote this for Nico. <laughs> because every time we have a corridor brainstorming session, he's always like, I have an idea. We, let's follow a bullet really far from one place to another. All right. And this whole movie is just that. Well, here's the reason why I like that shot so much. It's because it's actually a relatively easy shot to do. You just need a way to move a camera smoothly, whether it's on a gimbal or a steady cam or it's on a dolly track or something like that. And then you motion track it and you just put things that are frozen in the air around the motion tracking. So back in the day, we did this crazy frozen fight scene. Everything's like lingering in the air. And all we had to do was have everybody just hold still and then move the camera through the scene. Then later on we tracked it and added all the debris and the frozen smoke and stuff like that in the air. It gets a big reaction out of people. Oh well, yeah, yeah, you're right. Like I'm just like freaking out right now. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> What? What? This is how it ends? Is this the finale? <laughs> Two tanks turning their barrels to each other? Of course this is the finale. You gotta do it manually, just oh, trying to go no. faster. <laughs> I'm just saying this is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> oh, and it's gonna slide on out. That big sabot round. <laughs> Boom! Bam! A little, oh, that oh, molten metal shot. Sparks are so I good. Love sparks. Whoa! They even got those flame geysers coming out of the choo-choo hole. <laughs> <laughs> I love the detail of these shells, like liquefying when they strike objects. It's it's satisfying. What sets this movie apart from everything else? are the simulations of the fire, the smoke, and the sparks, and the liquid metal. Fire and smoke and liquid are like some of the hardest things you can ask a computer to do. And these guys are like, let's also do it in slow motion up close. So not only does it have to be high enough detail to look good at regular speed, it needs to be high enough detail to look good at slow motion. This is probably all done in Houdini, which is a program that has good fluid simulations and good smoke simulations and fire simulations and spark simulations and rigid body and cloth and all that stuff, and can do that all under the same roof. Houdini didn't have very good looking fire back in the day. It didn't have very good looking explosions, but they've been working on it and working on it. You just get all this crazy, crazy detail from having all the systems interact together. I mean, the closest thing we have at the studio for this is like X particles, where you can actually have your explosion push an object. It's like the only system we have right now that can actually go, oh, well, I can sense there's expanding air in this area, so I can translate that data to some objects on the ground and have them actually kind of move in relationship. I love how committed this movie is to just the tactics of a tank fight with this crew. It's like entire 20 minute sequences that are just a fight. Do you think World of Tanks funded this? <laughs> I wonder, man. <laughs> hey everybody, today we're playing World of Tanks. These people are our only hope. What's the name of the mission? Guardians. Now we're watching Russian Avengers. We've already reacted to Weighted Digital's take on the Avengers. So now we're taking our budget from 300 million and we're scaling it down to 5 million. And also we're going to Russia. Oh man, I cannot wait. Basically, this is <laughs> Russia's top superheroes fighting baddies. This is the part where they're like, all right, Deadpool. Or no, Nightcrawler plus Deadpool. Oh, sweet anime. Dude, oh, Russian man. anime. Oh! 
<laughs> that was pretty cool. I'm digging this already. This is pretty sweet. As cool as this is, it kind of ignores the fact that he would have to get to the same thickness as his sword to be able to go through the car. <laughs> <laughs> he gets really skinny. <laughs> oh yeah, that's so cool. How do they film that? He starts off on the left, and then he's on the right, and then he's on the left again. And it's all one smooth camera shot the whole time. The only real plate is the last one, and the other two, because he's mid-air slash like, away from camera, those are probably gonna be plates. I mean, that's how I would do it. Those yep. first two guys, you never see his feet. And I think the thing that really signifies what's real and what's not is look at his hair throughout all of it. So right there, you can see not a lot of detail on the hair. You get the big strands, but not the tiny strands. Same there. You get, kind of get the big strands, but not the tiny strands. And now let's look at his hair here. Yeah, you can see that really fine hair detail yeah. on top of his head now. He stabs the truck. The cuts were already on the truck, as were the swords, and he just comes in and grabs the swords, and they just paint him out for yeah. those few frames before he gets there. All right, so one of them is actually a bear, whoa, whoa. I guess. Wait, what the? <laughs> <laughs> bear man? He's a man bear! Sometimes he's full bear too, which I don't understand why he'd ever become full bear when he when man bear does this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say you have transformation powers. Do you ever have the forethought to maybe take your shirt off before you transform? <laughs> <laughs> like, or is it always like you're in such a grave situation that you're like, no time, and you shred that garment? I think the reason for that, Sam, is just that it always looks cooler to have clothes rip apart. It looks way cooler to have a cloth sim on your bear sim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's got freaking bear pecs! Dude. What, did you see how that guy folded? He's just like... <laughs> His just, legs just like pop up. Fold. It looks like when he made Marvel rated R. It's definitely because that's an element that they filmed either separately or had it in that shop and needed to retime it and move it differently. The bear is like, the bear's not bad. The bear in Dark Materials looks better in my opinion. I think there's a lot of CG bears that look better than this bear, but also those bears aren't transforming into a half man. That, that transformation at the beginning though really reminded me of that werewolf short from Love, Death and Robots. We, we gotta talk about Love, Death and Robots at some point soon because we have gotten so many comments about that and it's amazing. So subscribe if you want to see that in the future. <laughs> All right, so we have Ninja, we have Bear Man, uh, there's another one I haven't introduced you to, Rock Man, and then there's a girl, I don't know what her powers are. Is that Rock Man? No, that's Bad Man. Bad Man, gotcha. <laughs> Dude, it's Sloth from the Goonies. Yep. I was thinking the <laughs> same thing. This is, like, this is practically like watching a Bollywood movie. Yeah, this is very Bollywood. The bear takes one punch and it goes just down. Bear, like a punch <laughs> in the head is down. There's a plane. I throw my sword at it, giving him ropes. Then the bear. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very Bollywood shot right there. Yeah, they're not too worried about physics. I would be so jazzed up if I was a teenager in Russia and this came out. Yeah. This is what I think. I think the effects are good enough. Yeah, I agree. They're, they've got some rough edges, but they work. They're not really going for photorealism. I think at the end of the day though, it's like you gotta get your movie made and you gotta tell your story. And nothing in here is distracting from the story. Like when I see the bear, I'm like, oh, that wasn't really well done. They really should have done better on that. It's like, it's CG, but I've already embraced that half this movie is CG anyways. Like The Avengers, for example, that's basically an animated film. It's an animated film with like some human heads cut out and stuck onto the characters once in a while. And like this movie is entering that same territory where it's basically just an animated film, at least a good chunk of it, you know? In order to really enjoy this movie at all, your suspension of disbelief has to accept that there's a walking man bear with a gun turret. So it's like, so much of this you've already kind of just tuned out as not real. Yeah, you're like, oh, the animation's weird. It's like, well, okay, well, what would a bear fighting a mech really look like? <laughs> <laughs> this one's, this is some incredible CG in this place. Yeah, oh yeah, and I saw the trailer for this one. Dude, I'm getting some ago. Edge of Tomorrow vibes from yeah. this. Yeah, this is gorgeous animation. Wait, what, what, what? These guys are doing it. <laughs> That's a really good double right there. That's a really good CG double. Oh, and then a seamless blend into a person right there. Back to CG double. 
The animation here is on point, by the way. Do you see yeah. how much like inertia and momentum he carries with every punch into the ground? Yeah, and like it, it moves quick. Like, yeah. And, and it doesn't feel like it's like lagging. I'm blown away by their detail work with like all the dust on the ground. Like they are, that, that robot, every step is kicking up a lot of dust and dirt and debris. I mean, the thing that really stands out to me is how seamless they're coming in and out of the CG doubles of the guy to like the real life version of the guy. And a lot of what makes that work is really good cloth simulation. Cloth simulation is tricky because when, you're, when you have an animated character, there's a lot of like hidden parts where the, the body intersects with itself. So like if I have a shirt on in a CG character and I go like this, chances are like my model here and my model here on my character have slightly intersected, which would make the cloth do an impossible thing where it pushes into the character. So it gets really tricky trying to do like good full character cloth sims where you have uh, you know, an over jacket, then a vest, then a shirt, and then pants, and then a tie, and like you have all these different layers. And it also has to like have the complexity, the amount of wrinkles. Like if I go like this on my shirt, like there's a lot of wrinkles and texture and like detail in those wrinkles, you know? Like to do this, to model this, you have to put a lot of polygons in my shirt. And very often what you see is like things end up just kind of ballooning out from the character a little bit and being too simplified. It almost looks like things are made out of felt. It's like, look at how many wrinkles are in his jacket there. Look at the amount of wrinkles in his arms. Look at the detail on the wrinkles on his jacket on the back. He has an undershirt that's also a cloth sim underneath a suit jacket. His pants are a cloth sim. Everything is simulated. It's not just a, a static model. And then it transitions to the real actor on the ground in the foreground. Boom, right there. A little morph right there. A little morph cut. And then right here, back to, boom, 3D double. Right there, that's a 3D double. It's a really good 3D double. There's also, there's a breakdown here that's one of the coolest VFX breakdowns I've ever seen. This VFX breakdown is almost just as much work as the movie. It looks so good. Okay, so what's up with this spaceship? Dude. You're about to see what's up with this spaceship. This is one of the world-class, like, destruction shots. You're ready to see some physics simulations? Those... You're ready to see some things that would turn your computer into a little crisp, burnt Whoa, piece of dude. toast? Yeah. Oh. This is like the wall Raining coming down. down, down the oh! <laughs> dude, look Heck at yes. that. Is that so not good. the coolest thing you've ever seen? Oh, this shot look is at so that. cool. I love the color between the orange and blue. It just keeps going. Oh, and, oh, yes. oh, oh, oh. Oh, look at that bridge destruction. Oh, that highway, that highway! Stadium by, oh. This is easily wow. on par with anything coming out of like Hollywood. This is yeah. the top three world scale destruction shots of all time. So is that everything we're seeing here is CG? The 100%. buildings, the everything? Procedural Crazy. building generation. Okay, that, that is Houdini right there. Houdini's great at doing procedural buildings. The thing is like when you're building these models for destruction, they have to be built a certain way for destruction. You can't just have a cool looking model and blow it up. The parallels between rigging a building or like a structure for demolition really mimics how you would build it in real life because you need to build out like the structural elements, whether it's going to be wood based or metal based. You want to make sure you kind of have plaster like walls that break in a certain way. Is it going to bend when hit or is it going to shatter? Like there's a lot of details. You can't just take a model of a building and click a few buttons and have it explode right. It, you need to build it from the ground up to simulate properly. City? City traffic algorithms? <laughs> to divert traffic away? They see the, the little AIs going, oh, avoid this area, like that? <laughs> How many computer hours would you guess took to simulate the final assets being used in that shot? I'm not talking about practicing, I'm talking about what the actually was used in the final shot. Yeah. How many hours of processing power? Well, it's, it, that's kind of hard to guess because we don't know how many computers they are using. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Two computers an hour each, one computer two hours, same thing. Probably like 20 computers each putting in 100 hours. I think it was a lot more time than that. I'm gonna guess 5,000 hours. Imagine hitting simulate on your PC and walking away for 5,000 <laughs> hours and then coming back and then seeing that. <laughs> 208 days. Almost a year. If we used all the computers in the studio, it'd take a month. <laughs> <laughs> this freaking like, just throw down like, you wanna see a demo reel? I'll show you a mother <laughs> demo reel. <laughs> this demo reel is gonna take longer to render than the final shot. <laughs> <laughs>
So as you guys know, today's sponsor is Raycon earbuds. And not only are these things almost half the price of other leading Bluetooth wireless earbuds, but their latest model, the Everyday E25, has six hours of battery life, a ton of bass, a very awesome, sleek, colorful, compact design, and ultra-fast Bluetooth connectivity. I hate when I'm trying to connect some Bluetooth stuff to my phone. Pairing, uh, pairing, uh. You're not gonna hear that word over and over again. You're gonna open them up, put them on your ears, and they're gonna work. And also this wireless charging case is super convenient. If you're in the market for a pair of wireless earbuds, check these guys out. We have a link in the description where you can get 15% off. That's buyraycon.com slash corridor crew for 15% off your first purchase. And I don't, I don't see anyone else offering 15% off earbuds these days, so uh, this is an exclusive. Thanks for watching, everyone. Remember, we've got a couple other YouTube channels we'd like you to check out. We've got the Corridor Cast, where we do our podcasts, and we also have Node, where we play a bunch of games with each other and have great times. Both in video games and in live action. Some you can even play at home, too. Thanks, people. Thanks, everyone, for watching. See you in the next episode.